want to lift my hands higher than before I want to shout a little louder than before I want to shout a little louder than before Sing freedom
opportunity to get that way before you leave here. Praise God. Well, welcome to Fire and Water Church, Tuesday night. So glad that you guys came tonight. Uh, the ushers want to prepare to, to receive the offering tonight. Um, there should be an envelope in the seat pocket in front of you. If there's not one, please raise your hand and the ushers will bring one to you. Do we have anybody here that's a visitor tonight? You're here for the first time. Would you just raise your hand? Anybody? Praise God. <laughs> Do we have somebody over here? No? Praise God. Well, we'd like for you to stop by the bookstore on your way out. We have a gift for you. And if you'd fill out an information card, we'd love to find out how you heard about the church. And on um, the back, there's a, a place to put prayer requests. If you need prayer, we'd be glad to pray for you or help you in any way that we can. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you join us here at Fire and Water. Amen? Amen. Well, the only announcement we really have is um, Bible studies tomorrow night. Amen? So the men are meeting in the youth building at 6.30. The women are meeting in the kitchen at 6.30. And um, just a heads up to the women, we are finishing um, Lioness Arising tomorrow night. And I know you've all been waiting to hear what we're going to start next Wednesday. We are going to start Never Give Up by Joyce Meyer. So it's going to be an awesome study. If you haven't come yet to one of the women's Bible studies or the men's, um, please join us. It's an awesome time of, of fellowship and studying the word and getting to know one another. And um, so next Wednesday, don't, don't forget to come tomorrow, but next Wednesday we're starting Never Give Up by Joyce Meyer. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Pastor Tom, you want to pray for the offering? Just lift your offerings up to God right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we just love you, Father. We just love you for what you've done for us, Father, by sending your son who died on that cross for us, Father. And even though we didn't even deserve your grace and mercy, Father, we just thank you, Lord. And right now, Father, with these offering and these tides coming up to you, Father, God, press it down, shake it together, overflow for your kingdom right now, Father, and for the people that are giving, Lord, right now. Just bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. You just remain seated until the offering is taken.
only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. I can only imagine surrounded by your glory. Surrounded by your glory.
close your eyes right now. Just take a moment. Just give him thanks. Thank him for the day. Thank him for the week. Thank him for the life we live. Thank him for his goodness, his provision. Everything he's brought us through. Just enter his face right now with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Just open up your mouth and give thanks to the Lord for he is good. He is worthy of our praise. Oh, you're worthy, God. We thank you, God, for your goodness, Lord. For you're an awesome God. You're a merciful God. Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, you're patient. You're patient. Hallelujah. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Jesus, we thank you for, for your blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you that you wash us white as snow. Oh, we thank you. We thank you for being our friend. You're a king, but you're our friend. Hallelujah. We thank you for your peace peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds. We thank you for your peace, God. Oh, fill this place, God. Every person in this place that just needs your peace, God. Fill us, God. Fill us with your peace. God, I pray encouragement. Encouragement for every person, God. Uplift our spirits, God. Uplift our spirits, God. Lord, uplift our heads. So, Lift our eyes to look to you, God, and not to the circumstances around us, but to you. You are our source, God. You are our source, Lord. We look to you for everything, God. Not to what man says, but to what you say, Lord. Your word, God. And we thank you tonight. We just give you thanks. Fill this place, God, with your presence, your anointing, God. Let it fall on each person in this place. Set people free tonight. Oh, we need you, Lord. We need your presence. Every minute of the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Oh, oh, oh. 
House of the Lord. Amen. Let's open our Bibles. Book of Luke, chapter 5. Thank God. And it's it's humbling. It's humbling experience when God uses you as his mouthpiece. You know, I never would have crossed my mind to Luke chapter 5. Never would have crossed my mind to one, ever read the word of God, let alone preach the word of God. You know, and I thank the Lord that that he had mercy and grace on a, on a person like me. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Luke, Luke chapter 5, verses 37 through 39. When you have it, you can let me know by saying amen. amen. Praise God. If you don't have it, we'll wait for you for a few moments. Just let me know. I don't have it yet. We're all there. Amen. Luke chapter 5, verses 37 through 39. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, or else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled. And the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And both are preserved. And no man also having drank old wine straightway desireth the new. For he said, the old is better. Father, we, we worship you. We praise you. We thank you. We give you honor. We give you glory. Thank you for, for this privilege, my Lord. Thank you for being merciful and gracious toward us. Father, I pray tonight that. The unction of your Holy Spirit will rest in this place to anoint my lips, my tongue, to speak your word, Father God. Neither do I take from it or I add to it, Father God. It's your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I truly believe that, that we, are, we are that privileged and chosen generation to see what's written in the word. The prophets wrote about it. Christ spoke about it. And I really believe that we are living in those last days. And I'm not really going to get into a last day preaching, but I just, I want to add that to it. What I want to say tonight is, for me, is I want more. I don't want to stay where I've been at. I don't want to stay where I'm at right now. I want more of God. I want to finish this last leg of this race as if I'm going to take first place. I don't want to just be the second loser and take second place. I want to take first place 
And I believe the desire of God for us is for us to take first place, church. And you know, and we need to just step into that new season of our life. We serve of God of seasons. And how many of us have ever been through some seasons where we didn't think we were going to make it? We've been through some seasons where, man, we were, it was like, it was tough. But I, I want to tell you tonight that those that have been underneath, we're about to overcome. Those that have been forgotten, you're going to be remembered. You know what? It's long enough that the devil has had a hold of certain things in the church. God's about to release his power upon the church of God. It's up to us just to position ourselves in that place to receive what God wants from us. Scripture says, and no man putteth new wine into old bottles. There was a reason why the old wine went bad. It went stale, flavorless. It didn't have what newness has. It didn't have the scent of something that's fresh. You know, church, and I believe with all my heart that God wants me to tell you it's time the church gets that freshness on, puts that newness. God wants to turn that old stench into a fresh smell, into something that's going to give the world a curious mind. You know, Paul said that we're open letters read by all men. When people see us as the church, believe it or not, they may not tell us to our face, but they're watching us. They may not come right up to us and say, oh, yeah, you're a Christian, huh? They may not. But in the spirit, there's a battle right there right away. You know, and when the enemy sees that believer, the world will notice it and they say, there's something different. Like I said, even though they don't come right up to you, they don't come and just let you know, but they, they know there's something different. They see it in our face. They see it in why we don't laugh at their jokes. They notice it that we don't talk the same way. Some of us. I, I, I had to add that in there. I had to add it in there. Some of us. But that's the stench that the world has. And when we sometimes rub too much on that, then we start smelling like them. Then we start talking like them. And those same funny, nasty jokes to them are funny and, and we laugh at them. The same shows that they watch, we watch. My brother called me the other day and he wanted me to watch a show with him. Well, he told me to watch the show on TV. And it actually became a movie. I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to say that. And, and I told him, bro, I said, bro, come on now. I said, I'm not, you know what? And, and I told him, I said, bro, I, I'm being humble with you. I'm not, in no way am I saying am I any better than you. I love you. You're my brother. But I'm not going to go there with you. And I got a feeling he asked me just to see where I was going to go with it. To see if he was really going to say, all right, bro, let's go check it out. Hey, you know what? Let's go have, you know, guys night out. Let's go to the movies, just us. Like I said, I'm not going to go into the movie that he asked me to go watch or the show. But I told him no. And I say that to say this, church. It's a lot easier just to be bold and say no than to beat around the bush and like, you know what, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. I, you know what, let me, let me check it out right quick. Or let me ask my wife. Yeah. <laughs> let me see what my wife says. Babe, can I go watch that movie with my brother? And then you got to beat around the bush. And then I got to explain to my brother, nah, bro, I can't because my wife said no. 
Because I don't have. Proverbs says that the righteous are bold as a lion. I can stand up and say no for myself. I don't need no one to say no for me. If somebody's doing something, I can say no. Church, we can say no. We don't have to be part of them. We don't have to mix ourselves with them. We don't have to watch the same thing. We don't have to listen to the same thing. We can stand away from that. And then before you know it, we start smelling good. <laughs> Church, God wants to pour his spirit on his people, and the time is now. We can't wait another day. We need to enter into our new season because if we continue to do what we've already done, we're only going to get what we already have, church. I want more. I don't want to continue in this. I don't want to just, you know, yeah, praise God, there's church on Tuesday, and I come, and I jump, and I sing, and I wave, and, but then Wednesday, I'm like, ugh. I don't want to just come on Sundays with my suit and look like the Christian and put my usher tag on on Sundays. But then on Mondays, I'm a whole different kind of usher. I don't want that no more, church. I don't think God wants that for his church, for his body, for his people. He wants us to come out from among them, church. The book of Hebrews chapter 4, right quick. There's a new way. If the old way is not working, there's a new way. Chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, it says like this. It says, seeing that we have a great and high priest. That is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. He said, let us hold fast our profession. Hold on to it. What rescued you from this world, hold on to it. I'll never forget. I will never, ever forget. No matter what I go through. It does not matter what mood I get up this morning, tomorrow morning. It, I will never forget the words of that bro who told me. I was 19 when he said, it's you, young man. You've been preached to all your life and look at you. Man, I think about it, and as God is my witness, and it still gives me shivers up my spine. Because he had the audacity and he had the nerve to come up to my face and tell me, you need Jesus. You need a Savior. You're not going to do it on your own no more. God is tugging at your heart. Church, let us hold, it said, hold fast to our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. There's nothing that he don't know. We have a Savior who knows it all. We serve an all-knowing God, an all-powerful God who's been through it all, who knows exactly what you're going through. And because he went through it, he can share with you. He can sit there and hug you. He can sit there and tell you it's going to be okay. I've been there. He can sit there and walk with you hand in hand. He's not one to just leave you in the corner. We don't serve a God that just, you know, However many candles we light today, that's what he's going to do for us. That's not our God. Or maybe if I bring him a piece of fruit today, he'll do something for me. Have you guys seen those? Them little statues you put a piece of fruit in front of? I, I, I've seen them. I'm serious. I'm not lying. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Church, we can come boldly before him. We can come confidently knowing that he loves us. Knowing that if we mess up, there's grace. There's mercy to cover us. Knowing that, you know what, Father, 
I'm sorry I blew it. You know what? He's able to forgive us of our sins. Wash our sins away. But church, we have to be careful that we don't use grace as a band-aid. Grace isn't there for us to sin purposely and say, I'm going to ask for forgiveness. There's grace anyways. Oh, you know what? God, God knows my heart. The Bible says that man looks on the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. That's what the Bible says. And people take advantage of it and they twist it. They manipulate it. They make it convenient for their own lives. Well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go do that because God knows my heart. And I'm going to be there Sunday. I'm going to be at the altar. I'll be the first one right here asking for forgiveness. But today, I'm going to go ahead and open this can right quick and drink some of this. Church, I'm telling you, before we came to church today, and I was all, my wife said, you forgot this, you forgot that, you forgot this. <laughs> well, I thought you were supposed to get that. What do you mean? That's, you forgot this. And, and the other day when we came, Sunday, we came to church, I forgot my belt. <laughs> right? And I was like, man. And I told my wife, I said, you forgot my belt, huh? <laughs> my wife said, you forgot your belt. I didn't forget your, that's your belt. So tonight, I was like, all right, I need this. And, and, and believe me when I tell you, church, and I say this humbly, I mean, it's a new season for us. The more the enemy pressures us, and pushes us, the more he makes the mistake. Because as he pressures and pushes, we get closer and closer and draw closer and closer. And before you know it, there's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. There's revival. There's fire. There's healing. There's miracles. There's things going on. He thinks, well, I'm going to pressure him. Or I'm going to put him through this. I'm going to put him through that. He's going to give up. He don't know. He don't know. He don't know. We are not the kind that go backwards, church. We're not the kind that go backwards. But we're going forward, church. We're moving forward in the name of Jesus. So I told my wife, don't forget my belt. I love my wife. When I'm up here, that's kind of like my, that's kind of like my little buffer space right there where I can just kind of throw something in there right quick. My wife forgot this. My wife didn't remind me here. You know, but I, it's, she's my queen. Amen. Church. Hebrews 10.39 says, But we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Do you remember when we first came to the feet of Jesus? We didn't see him physically. We didn't see him with our eyes. But we believed in our heart that he was doing something at that moment. We believed that he was changing us. We believe that he was doing a miracle right there at that moment. You know, and we took a step of faith without even seeing him. Without, you know, you, we heard a word and it touched our heart. And God convicted us of our sin. And we drew close to him and we asked him for forgiveness by faith. We believe that. Church. Now is the time where we enlarge our faith, where we enlarge our territory, where we let God do what he wants to do with us. It may not be something that we want to do even at times, but he knows exactly what he's doing with us. He knows exactly where we need to go and why we need to go there. Something else needs to take place in our life. We just can't continue. I, a 
amidst the times that we live in church, I think something else has to take place. And I believe with all my heart, and I believe God wants me to say, it's time the church lets the Holy Ghost in the building. We need Holy Ghost power. We need the fire from heaven. We need a revival from heaven to change our lives. Those that walk in, we need a revival from on high, church. We can't continue on what we're doing. There's got to be a change. There has to be a revival. The church is doing like Samson. Samson had some, oh my God, he had some great victories. But all along, Samson played with fire. And little by little, he was put to sleep. To the point where he didn't even know. Samson chapter 16, when you get a chance, read it. He didn't even know that after he woke up, the Bible says that the Spirit of God had left him. Church. Sometimes the church don't know the Spirit of God's not even in the place. And we're hoot and hollering because of our emotions. It's not even a faith thing. It feels good. It feels good to be at church on Sunday. It feels good to be on Tuesday night. It feels good to be there on Saturday night. It's got to be more than a feel-good thing, church. It has to be a faith thing. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, we're not going to realize when we fall asleep, when we wake up, he's departed from us. The Bible says that he had a treacherous death. Book of Psalms says, beauty in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. I don't think Samson's death was beauty to the Lord. Because if you read the scriptures, he went through some stuff when he had to die. But he was asleep. He didn't realize it. Saul, the same thing. And these are men that were chosen of God. They were handpicked by God. Saul was another one. Handpicked by God to be the leader of Israel. To be their, their king. 1 Samuel chapter 16, when you get a chance, read it. Paul, Saul didn't even, know, didn't even know the spirit of God departed from him. He thought he can still come and go as he pleased as the king. Church, we need to wake up. And I... God is gracious and merciful. Man, we serve a loving father. But church, we're living in those times when you see laws being passed like got passed last week. We're living in the last days, church. Man, the first people I thought about when I heard the news, man, I got bros and sisters that don't serve God. I got a lot of family that don't want nothing to do with God, let alone serve them. They won't step foot in the church. And like I told you in the past, out of like 70 grandkids that my grandparents have, there's, there might be three of us that go to church. Cousins, my brothers, my sisters. Man, when I heard, when I read the news, I got chills up my spine. And I told my wife, I got scared. I cried for my family. Man, we are living in those days, church. Church, we need a revival. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to get into that season and get out of this old season. We need that new wine, but we got to get out of this old wine bottle mentality. You know what? We need that new wine of the Spirit of God. We need what Joel said, in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, church. We need the Spirit of God so that we can overcome to be able to withstand boldly, church. Church, and I would, 
like I said, it, it's humbling. It's humbling. Man, I would have never, never, ever would have thought. Never, never, never. I would have never crossed my mind ever be behind a pulpit. Man, never, you know, read the word of God, like I said, let alone preach the word of God. You know, it, it would have never, you know, and I say, like I said, humbly. Man, I think of how much God really loves us. How much grace he has for us to rescue, man, a knucklehead like me. You know, to reach down and to like, you know, when you rewind the tape and you think about it, ain't nothing else to do but to praise God, but to worship him, but to give him honor, but to give him glory, but to lift him on high, but to just shout his name, but to say, thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord, for what you've done in my life. I love you for rescuing me. I love you because I'm not that person that I used to be before, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's a beginning to that church. There's a beginning to getting into that season and letting that fire just burn away. His name is Jesus. That's the beginning. And I want to end with this, church. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. For us to be renewed and be revived by the Spirit of God, certain things got to happen. Some old stuff got to be put away and some new stuff's got to be brought out. All right? We can't, like I said, we can't continue doing what, what, what we've done because we're only going to have what we already have right now. That's it. It's not going to get no further. So Ephesians chapter 22 it says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Verses 23 and 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It's after God creates that in you, church, that we get into that new season. And... In verse 23, that word renewed, it talks about doing a 180 and going the opposite direction. Just, just not a 360 if you're going in the same direction. No, not a 360, okay? Just do a 180, that's it. Okay? Just... Half a turn, not a whole turn, because you'll be going in the same direction, okay? Just turn halfway, and you'll be going in the opposite direction. Sometimes we take it and just go all the way around. And we say, well, he's turned my life around, but you're walking the same way. Let him turn you around so you can go the other way. Not to walk the same way. I want to end with this, church. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no passion, the church perishes, even though it may be full to the doors. I say that to say this, church. Tonight, God wants to turn you around in the opposite direction. He don't want you going the same way. But there's a condition. But God. How many times have we not heard that? But God. Praise the Lord. God don't remind us, but you did this, you did that. God don't, don't, don't bring back old stuff. You know, God don't, don't hold it against us. We don't serve a God like that. We serve a God who takes it and says, just don't do it no more. Do you remember he told that adulterous woman that? When everybody wanted to stone her, he said, 
Just don't do it no more. I don't, even, I don't, I don't condemn it. Just don't do it no more. That's it. Miracle right there. Just don't do it no more. Turned her whole life in the opposite direction from what she knew what was going on. Church, tonight we have the opportunity to let God turn our life in the opposite direction. Like I said, I wanted to end with this. It's up to us how much we want of God. It's up to us how far we want to go. If we want to live a diminished life in the spirit or we want to live a life that's full of the spirit. What do we want? It's totally up to us. It's my decision to get up in the morning if I want to pray that day, if I don't want to pray, if I want to read the word, if I don't want to read, nobody's going to force me. No one watches me. Well, I take it back. My wife and my children do watch me, but I'm responsible to them. I'm the priest of my home. I have to pray, and I have to read the word. I have to have some worship music at times. I have to be that example. That's the legacy I want to leave for my children, for my wife, for my grandchildren. That's what I want them to say about me. So I have to do it. But that's up to me, though. Pastor, don't call me and say, hey, Tony, did you pray today? Did you read your word today? Bro, Ken, don't call me. Hey, I know you usher, but are, are you prayed up? No. You don't call me. That's my decision. That's totally up to us, church, how much you want of God. Do you really want a full life led by the Spirit, or you want to live Diminish, half baked, just barely, just barely making it. How you doing today? Well, I'm all right, kicking rocks. Nah, nah, we've not called to live that way, church. In spite of battles, in spite of struggles, in spite of circumstances, we're not called to live a barely life in the in the spirit. We're called to live someone that's full of the spirit of God. And you know the awesome part about it. That the spirit of God, the power of God, it reproduces itself. If you feel full today, you're not going to be empty tomorrow. Okay? If you're, man, if you're in prayer and you're locked in the secret closet and God is changing you and he's doing something, you know what? Tomorrow you can get plugged in right in. You can go right back in there. It reproduces itself. Fire begets fire. So if that's what you want, church, like I said, there's a condition. And it first starts. It first starts by giving your life to the one who can give you that spirit. There's only one. When the disciples, their condition was just wait. He had walked with them. They had walked with him. They had seen things but until they receive the fullness of the spirit that they begin to experience out of their own hands the miracles that Christ talked about. So church, it's totally up to us. And this isn't just for the church. This is for everybody and anybody. If you want the spirit of God to reign and rule and guide you and comfort you and direct you and lead you and do miracles through you and your life, you know what? It starts with the relationship with Jesus Christ. That's where it all begins, right there. Every head bow. Father, we, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, and we glorify you. We give you honor, we give you glory. Father, tonight, it's your word. It's your spirit. It's you. Church, I want to make that invitation to everybody. Everyone here. Everyone here tonight. Like I said, that, that starts with the relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you would like to begin that relationship tonight, I'm going to count to three. When I count to three, just lift up your hand. Every head bowed. 
No one looking. Don't worry about who's next to you. Don't be embarrassed. This is your moment. This is your moment to encounter the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's your moment to be touched and to experience the power of God through his son Jesus. For those that raised your hand, I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith. I'm going to ask you to come up. Come up to the front. Come up to the front and just... Thank you, Father. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We glorify you. We give you honor. We give you glory. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. Come on up. Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't be embarrassed. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Thank you. Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. Anyone else? There's room at the cross. Come on up. Don't waste the opportunity. Christ. It, it all starts right there. Your miracle, your turnaround, your turning point, it all starts right here, right now. So as I pray, I'm just going to ask everyone just to pray after me. Like I said, it all begins right here. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. I thank you for your son who died on the cross for me. Today, I acknowledge I need you as my Lord, as my Savior, as that full price for me. For my sins, my iniquities, my transgressions. I believe that you forgave my sins. And I believe in my heart, when I confess with my mouth, you as Lord. Today, I thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for changing my direction. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Church, and I would just like for a few moments, for a few moments, just... Spend a few moments and ask God that God just change that direction and send that fire in your life. Send that Holy Ghost power that you need. You know, some of us have gone around the mountain and we're going around the mountain and we're continue walking around the mountain. But there's a victory that God has for you. But you got to open your mouth so God can fill it. So God can change your direction. It's up to you, church. For a few moments, just worship him and praise him. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you. We glorify you. We bless your name. We give you honor. We give you glory.
Father, I pray that you just fill your church, that the power from on high will just flow in this place, my Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Just worship him for a moment, church. Praise him for a few moments. Thank him. Thank him for what he's doing in your life, what he's going to do. Just worship him and praise him. Give him honor. Give him glory. Just open your mouth. Just bless his name. Father, we thank you. Bless his name. Oh, that he would just pour out of his spirit upon your life, your family, your children, your home. Father, in Jesus' name. Fill them, Father God. Fill them with your Holy Ghost. Power from on high, my Lord. Power from on high, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father, we worship you. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. 